good evening church uh, I pray all is well and um, that the last time we gathered the last messages was a blessing to you um, today man I have another word from the Lord and uh, it's heavy um, but it's needed so um, without further ado man let's, let's just reverence the Lord in prayer man and allow him to uh, uh, pour into us what need to be poured in um, Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, forgive us our sins, Lord. Uh, we thank you for your grace, Lord. We thank you for your mercy. Uh, we thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Help us in our heart, Lord. Um, remove every wicked place, Lord. Um, every high place that we might have exalted ourselves, Lord. Remove everything that causes us to be disconnected from you, Lord. Uh, light the way for us, Lord. Um, purge our minds, Lord, of distractions. Uh, uh, confusion lord anything lord that will hinder your word from being fruitful right now lord remove that lord um create lord a place in our heart right now to receive all that you have to pour into us lord jesus and lord we thank you for preserving your word for us lord because you don't have to do none of this lord but by your love you choose to give us your word and through your word you choose to reveal yourself to man reveal yourself to us today lord uh, we need you, Lord. We need more of you, Lord Jesus. We need you. We can't do nothing without you, Lord. Help us, Lord. Teach us today how to uh, obey your spirit. Teach us today, Lord, how to live according to your word, Lord Jesus. We need you. And, Lord, we thank you for all that you've done and all that you bring and all that you pour out, Lord. In Jesus' precious and holy and matchless name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, church, um, man, the Lord, Lord, the Lord gave a, a heavy word, man. There's a lot that goes on in life, man. There's a lot of things we chase. There's a lot of things uh, we see. There's a lot of things we do. There's a lot of things sometimes we have our, our hands involved in. But overall, the main thing that oversees everything in this life that we should uh, be paying attention to is our heart towards Christ Jesus. And obeying his and obeying the word of God. And through all of this, right now, through through obeying his word and and um trying to live by his, live by his will, it's the priority, and at the bottom of that, within that is salvation. And what we have to understand is that salvation should be more priority than anything in our life because everything in this life we can't take with us. But the time that lies ahead and is what is right outside of everybody's door. It's now for the Lord has spoken and said there is time no longer that we need to have urgency in getting our hearts right toward his will because he's coming very soon. So today the Lord uh, uh, gave him a, a, a message, um, gave a message from his word, man. And um, it's a serious message, man. Um, it's a serious message, man. It is a serious message, man. And um we want to take this in okay uh so without further ado man let's um let's get into the word of god man and um the, i was in luke i was in the book of luke man and the lord spoke heavy man and it, it was good it was good for the holy spirit to fall in that moment because man it was like Man, the, the the spirit, I'm telling the Holy Spirit, man, he's something else, man. He's serious, man. He man, you you be in that word, man. He just drop a drop some weight on your shoulder, like, whoa, Lord. You know what I'm saying? And man, uh, let's go, let's go to Luke 5. We're gonna go to Luke 5, man. Excuse me. And the Lord was uh the Lord was with the Lord was, uh, Luke 5 was dealing with Peter. He was dealing with Peter. Okay. Well, let's first start here. We're gonna start, uh, we'll start with we'll start with Luke 4. The Lord just brought something to my attention, something he showed, and then we'll go to Luke 5. Okay. Um let me see. Well, I take the back. We're gonna go to we're gonna start with Luke five, but I'm gonna give you uh, a scenario what happened in the scriptures, uh, and and it happened in the scriptures in the uh, book of uh, Mark, and also yeah in the book of Mark, 
and um it's very serious and um uh, this is what the lord this is what the lord said now it was a man with unclean spirits um it was a man with unclean spirits he's he was inside of a tomb he was inside of a tomb and he was um cutting on himself and, and he was cutting on himself inflicting harm on his body um because he was inside of a tomb okay and whenever the people of that time would try to bind him um he would break free every time right but when jesus came to the shore when he got off the boat and came to the shore the man came out of the tomb and fell fell at his feet and jesus delivered that man from from the, the legion of demons that was in him so he was delivered from that um by christ jesus okay well when we do our research, when we do our research on 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 tomb, we get an understanding that uh, a tomb in a tomb back in old time they would put dead people in a tomb, okay. And so, as we look at that, the man they say the man dwelled in the tomb. And anytime you dwell somewhere, that means you hang out there. This is place you you be all the time, okay. So the and if we got an understanding that in a tomb is dead people, then this man dwelled among the dead people. The man dwelled among the dead people, okay? And notice also that the people physically would try to bind the man in uh, in the town, but he would break those chains every time, right? Which means also that we can't try to uh, physically handle a spiritual situation. Because, no, they tried to take physical chains and bind this man when he had a spiritual problem going on. And a lot of times that's in our life. We don't understand that, <coughs> that the weapons of our welfare are not carnal. <clears throat> and that we fight with wickedness in high places according to Ephesians 6 that we fight the fight is not against flesh and blood But against evil principalities in high places, right? And notice that these people tried to bind this man physically when he had a spiritual problem going on And because he had a spiritual problem going on the physical chain from this world could not bind that man, man. But notice when he came to Jesus who was spirit. He was delivered man. Right, which means only the spirit can deliver uh, only the spirit can deliver you from the spiritual battle that we go through. There is nothing that we can do physical. No, no, no new salary. No, no person. No new thing. No new car. Nothing can help us with our spiritual place except for Christ Jesus. Okay. And notice this man dwelled in the tomb. Dwelled in the tomb full of dead people. The Lord have said in this world, in this world, it is like a tomb full of dead people. And we wonder why we go through so much stuff. Why are we battling with so much stuff? Uh, and, 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 and why are we inflicting harm on ourselves uh, spiritually? That we are in spiritual dark places in the spiritual black, uh, spiritually um, dark places because we're trying to dwell in the, full, uh, dwell in the um, tomb full of dead people, right? Right. And see, in this world and in, in, inside of this world, it's like a tomb full of dead people. And when you conform to this world, you'll be doing things that you should not be doing. You'll be doing things that ungodly because you are in a tomb full of dead people. Right. Right. And notice that. Notice the man. Notice the man that came out of that tomb. The man that came out of that tomb. Um, he got delivered when he came out of that tomb. Right. Right. See, notice the man came and fell at fell at Christ Jesus feet. So he been dwelling in that tomb, but he had been in there so long. He was like, you know what, man, I got to get delivered. When he heard Jesus, when he, when he, when he, when he, when he heard the Lord, he seen the Lord. The man came out of that dead place. Man. He came out of that dead place because he wanted deliverance. And the Lord is saying today, I'm here for you. I want to deliver you. Come out of that tomb. Come out of that tomb and come and receive deliverance from me. Right. And a lot of us right now know the truth, know what Jesus has said, and still choose to dwell in a tomb. What is dwelling in that tomb? Conforming to the world when Jesus have already gave us the truth. Right? But there is how he said, come to me and I will give you rest. Come to me and I will deliver you. I will deliver you from this. Right? And notice that the legion, noted that the legion, noted that the uh the demons that was in him, the demons that was in him said. Uh, they, they said to Jesus, they said, um, Lord, have you came to torment us before their torment time? And as we read scripture, we know torments to evil spirits is their sentence to hell, right? So they saying, Jesus, have you came to send me to hell before my, before the appointed time, before the appointed time? And they said, no, 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 Jesus, don't send us into the pigs. No, I mean, excuse me. Don't, don't send us to hell. Send us into the pig. So Jesus commanded them to go into the pigs. And they ran off the bank. The pigs ran off the bank. Okay. So this is the thing you have to ask yourself. 
these evil spirits, they are fallen angels. They is begging Jesus not to go to hell, which means they are running from hell. If demons are running, running from hell, what should we be running? You hear what I'm saying? The demons, the demons know that God have set a mandate for, for all unrighteousness, all wickedness to be dealt with. And because they know that a God is nothing to play with and they know that's a serious play, they themselves are running. See, there are lots of there are lots of to people in this world, there are lots to the men and women of God to try to get us to follow and lead us straight and go to this play, but they they run to they running from this place. They running from the play, but the thing about them is they are already sentenced. It's no hope for them. They are already going to hell. But see, through for us, there's hope through Christ Jesus. So we have to come out of that dead place, come out of that tomb and receive the grace of Christ Jesus um, by his outpouring of his spirit, by his blood, his sacrifice of his blood on the cross that set us free from the com the condemnation of this world. Right. Man, we should be running to the cross. We should be running to the cross, man. We should be running from the cross. Listen, fallen angels, they are scared of hell. They, no, 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 Lord, don't send us, don't send us, send us in the pigs instead. They are running. What should we be? And we got grace. We got a second chance. They don't. Man, we should take advantage of the grace that God have given us. Prime example, just like in the book of Job, God told God told Satan, um, you can uh, you can touch your body, don't you can touch his body, but don't touch his soul. Well, well. Satan, 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 Satan didn't touch that man's soul either, which means he knows God is not nothing to play with. He knows if he would have did anything, God would have smited him before it's pointed time. So if they know God ain't nothing to play with, listen to me, these fallen angels know God ain't nothing to play with. Man, God is nothing to play with. Christ Jesus is nothing to play with. He is kings of kings and Lord of lords. He loves us so much. Well, let me tell you something. The Lord is coming back with the hammer. He's coming back as a righteous judge. And any man that has not lived righteously by faith in him, by his blood that he sacrificed on the cross, and him sending his spirit to help us walk this thing out and make it there, man will have no excuse. And because of that, Man will be separated forever if they don't obey the gospel of Christ Jesus when we have a chance by his grace to get right. Okay. Second thing, Luke 5. Let's get there. Luke 5. We're going to talk about uh, this is when Jesus first uh, called his disciples. He first he first was calling his disciples. And this is when he bumped into Peter. This is um, this is, um, uh, a, a, a moment in the scriptures when... Um, um, when when Jesus first bumped into the people. So let's read a little bit. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the, the lake of uh, uh, Genesaret. Excuse me, I can't pronounce it <laughs> um, good. And saw two ships standing by the lake, but the, fishermen were gone, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's and prayed, which was Simon, which is Peter, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draw. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down our net. And when they had, had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net broke. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Peter, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at his found, fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, "Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord." Jesus, man, for he was astonished, and at at all that were with him, and with him at the drought of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Debedee, which were partners of Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, for henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Man, this was a beautiful and powerful passage right here, man. Okay, the first thing the Lord, notice, notice the first thing, man. Notice the first thing that it's first, it's first thing. Uh, I want you to draw your attention to, and then we're gonna read what the Lord said. Okay. First thing, notice that. Notice that uh, Jesus. Notice that uh, Jesus taught on the ship, and know that they have been thr thrusting all night. 
Meaning they was out there all night trying to catch fish. They was out there all night trying to catch fish. Okay, that's the first thing I want you to pay attention to. The Lord wants us to pay attention. Not me, the Lord wants us to pay attention to. And second, notice that they didn't catch nothing. And then, and then when Jesus told them, when Jesus told them, hey, go and thrust uh, go, go thrust out and throw your net. And then after they after they did what Jesus said, they caught a lot of fishes. Okay. They caught a lot of fishes. Right? And then the next thing is that the next thing after that, that they told their partners about what Jesus had done. They even called the other partners in and said, hey, come help us with this. Right? And they and, and, and both of the ship became full <laughs> that they was about to sink. Okay? Right? And then after, after, after Peter seen the glory of the Lord Jesus, he fell down at his feet and said, Lord, I am a sinful man. A lot of times that is our response <laughs> when we see the glory of Jesus and how good he is. It calls us to fall to our knees because it's the goodness of God that brings man to repentance. Okay? So he was astonished, man. This is beautiful. And Jesus told him, "Fear not, from 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 fear not, from henceforth thou have catch men. Um, for, fear not, from hence, for thou shalt catch men. And when they have brought their ship to land, they forsook all and followed him. And because they seen the glory of God, now he doing these men seen the Lord, and they forsook everything that they knew to follow him, in his glory. Man. Okay, here we go." Word from the Lord. Okay. Notice now, Peter and them was out there all night that they could have, they could have, when they could have, they could have disobeyed the word of God. Jesus said, "Go back out there." Now they've been out there threshing all night, and the Lord said, "Hey, go back out there." Well, what if Peter was not home? What if Peter said, "Look, man, I've been out there all night, man. I ain't going back out there. I know nothing ain't gonna happen." And in, in the in the second thing, notice by him submitting to the Lord's will, he received fishes, right? He received fruit by submitting to the Lord's Lord will. And by him submitting to the Lord's will, he seen the glory of God. And by him seeing the seeing the glory of God, it brought him to a humble place where he even felt like he wasn't unworthy. He had to fall before his knees. And when he got a revelation of Christ, Jesus, Jesus told him, fear not, fear not, child, fear not, fear not, fear not. I'm going to take you, I'm going to take you from this situation and I'm going to, I'm going to take you from, I'm going to take you from here and I'm going to choose to use you for my glory instead. Man. This is what the Lord said, man. He said, look at Peter. It's, few, it's, 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 it's a few things that Peter had that was powerful in his character in that moment. Out of out of revelation of the Lord. The Lord said, we have to humble, we have to be humble people and not prideful. Because notice, if, if if Peter would not have humbled himself and think because he'd done it already, that nothing was gonna happen, he wouldn't receive the he wouldn't have seen the glory of God. See, he said we have to be humble people and not be prideful. Apart from Christ Jesus and obeying His Spirit, who we receive by faith in Christ Jesus, there are no true, true works can be done. Because notice, at first when Peter was trying to do it in his own strength, nothing happened. Right? He was trying to do in that moment when, that, when he was trying to do it in his own strength, he could not do nothing. But when he submitted to the will of the Lord, he was able to bear fruit. Right? Right. Which means, apart from Christ Jesus, no true works can be done. I repeat, apart from Christ Jesus and obeying his spirit who receive, who we receive by faith in Christ Jesus, no true works can be done. Right? True works. Right? Because you can do something, guess what? And it, and it, and, it, and, and it don't and, and it don't carry over because it wasn't rooted in love. Only true works are rooted in the love of Christ Jesus. Now, next thing. Change changing your um um let me see uh and in this notice Peter got a revelation of the power of God, right? Which means this revelation changes the perspective that that the power is within him who is Christ Jesus and not in ourselves. For only through him do we receive the power of his spirit that give us strength and wisdom, uh it did give us strength and wisdom, give us strength and wisdom. And understand it to carry out his will. If man tries in his own strength, he will fail every time. Notice Peter said, we have toiled all night. We have toiled all night and have not caught nothing. See, if man try to walk and carry out the will of God on his, or will of God on his own, he will fail every time. Right? Okay? 
Next thing what the Lord said. By faith, when Peter encountered, when Peter encountered um, the Lord, he submitted to his will. Right? Because no, even though Peter taught, taught, he said, but Lord, if he said, but if Lord, if you want me to do it, I'll do it. So even despite what he have done and he failed, he said, Lord, I'm going to submit to your will. See, by faith, when Peter encountered the Lord, he submitted to his will. Only then was he was able to catch fish. Only then was he able to bear fruit. Second, through his submission, he changed his work detail from physical work to spiritual work that would endure into the kingdom of God. Right. See, when we obey the spirit of God through the Bible, who we receive through the blood of Christ Jesus, Jesus take us from our old life. Right. And give us a new life to bear fruit, fruit that will last and carry over into the glory of God. Right. He took him from a, a physical place to a spiritual place. How do we know that? Because Jesus said, for, 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 forsake the physical catching of fish and I'm going to teach you to catch men. Right. Meaning to spread the gospel and retrieve those that are lost. OK. Second, through his submission. He, uh, OK. Uh, OK. Excuse me. This also show no spiritual work can be gained. By man, unless he is of the spirit, man. right? Because no, notice Peter did not gather fish, right? Peter did not gather fish, but by the power of the uh, of Lord Jesus, because the Holy Spirit dwelled on Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit moved through His power through the Lord Jesus. The Holy Spirit dwelled on Jesus, man. and because of Jesus, because of Jesus, He made that happen. What seemed that not, He made that happen. That what. He made that possible that seemed not was possible because Peter said we tore it all night, man, and we ain't got nothing. But see, when Jesus power hit that water, Jesus, he the fish filled up, filled up Peter and them both. And they had to help and somebody else had to come. Right. So this also show no spiritual work can be gained by man unless he is of the spirit. The only way to be spirit to, to the only way to be spirit is is to be born of the spirit. Right. Which is the Holy Spirit, says the Lord, our God. The only way to be born of the Spirit is through the blood of Christ Jesus, man. That's why we need that blood. That we cannot carry this out on our own, this based on the knowledge we, the, the, based on the knowledge we know, right? Because there's no one good. There's no one righteous. The only reason man is made right with God is through the blood of Christ Jesus. Matter of fact, the righteousness of Christ Jesus is what we're going to be judged by. That's why we live our life trying to obey the will of God, so we can be, um, uh, uh behold in the character of Christ Jesus. So we can step into the kingdom of heaven because it's just like college. It's just like college. Um, whenever someone is trying to enter into a college, enter into a college, then they have uh, a requirement before they have to enter into the college. They have a standard by the SAT score before they can enter into the college. The same thing with the kingdom of heaven, right? Right. The test score, the, the, the thing that resembles the test score is the blood of Christ Jesus. Right. Right. And that's our SAT for getting to, to the kingdom of heaven. That is our SAT for getting into the kingdom of heaven. Our his blood cleansing us, right, and taking on his righteousness, give us uh me, give us the uh, uh give us um the way to heaven. We through his blood we were meet we meet the requirement for heaven, right? All right. So this is what the so the only way to enter to this kingdom of heaven is to be born of the spirit through the blood of Christ Jesus. We can only bear fruit that comes from the Lord by submitting to his to his will and obeying his spirit who is the Holy Spirit who increases our faith by the who, who increases our faith by the word of God who is Christ Jesus man perspective will not change I repeat man perspective will not change I repeat listen hear what the spirit saying unto the churches man perspective will not will not change until he have a, 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 a until he have a revelation of the truth um, until he kind of Christ Jesus. Man perspective will not change until he have a revelation of the truth, which is Christ Jesus. Right. Right. Man perspective will not change until he have a revelation of the truth. And he won't receive that re the revelation of that truth until, until he encounter Christ Jesus. In addition, this shows man have failed in his own strength. How do we know that? Let's go to Genesis 1. Let's go to Genesis 1. Right. When man was obeying the word of God, man did not fall. Right? But when man was deceived by Satan, because he tempted them to know knowledge of good and evil, he said you can be like God, right? When man was tempted and their heart was changed to try to do it in their own strength, man fell and was in, and died spiritually and was separated from God. 
the same thing today in addition this show man will fail in his own strength man in, 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 in addition this shows man have failed in his own strength and trying to do it in his own will but through Christ Jesus he is he will prevail how do we know that because through the Christ through Christ Jesus we have won the victory right right through his blood because we could not carry out law perfectly we could not fulfill the law he came to fulfill the law right and through him we have won the victory right so through Christ Jesus through Christ Jesus but through Christ Jesus he prevailed therefore in him we prevail we have the victory in him and no matter what you have done in your past failures we can overcome in Christ Jesus and our past failures and our past failures failures does not mean he don't want a relationship with us and to give us new life how do we know that because Peter had failed in their boat trying to catch fishes right Right. But Jesus, he submitted to his will and, and, and Jesus, by his power, he was able to catch fish, fishes. He was able to bear, bear fruit in his life, right? And because of Christ Jesus, through his blood, we are now able to bear fruit, right? right? Bear fruit that will last and carry over into the kingdom of heaven by faith and obedience, okay? Bear fruit that the, the Father will find worthy for us to enter into the kingdom of God by faith in Christ Jesus and not our own works, right? But by our works of faith, they give us evidence that we believe in Christ Jesus. Okay? Okay. And notice at the end of that, that also is evident that Jesus um, bring us into uh, that our past, our failures, bring us to relationship. Because guess what? After uh, Peter submitted and Jesus gave him a revelation of his power, Jesus, Jesus seen that Peter was grieved. Peter failed. He said, man, Lord, forgive me, Lord. He was grieved. He 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 was grieved. He fell down because he seen the power. He was overwhelmed by his presence, right? And Peter said, if Peter fell down before. He said, "Son, fear not." He said, "He he 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 said he said he said fear not." He said, "Fear not." He said, "Fear not." Um, and he said, "I'm a you. I'm gonna take you from this." take this and follow me so he gave peter the choice even though he had failed and and he and, and this and this and this to understand he said in this uh, understanding of this too he was like even though you fail look forget that part of fish catching fish right i'm gonna give you new life and fish for man so even though peter had failed he took this man and gave him new life by following him because once we submit to the will of god and follow christ jesus a new life begin we are born of the spirit he give us spirit who is the holy spirit to help us walk this thing out well, we won't walk carnal according to the flesh, but we'll walk spiritually according to the spirit because he, through him, we walk in the light and we are alive in Christ Jesus. They keep us covered in, they keep us covered in his righteousness by the blood of Christ Jesus. So when Jesus return and judge us, he won't see our shame and our nakedness. Okay. Right. And Jesus said, um, I did not come for, and another evidence of this in scripture when Jesus said, um, that I didn't come for the healthy. It's not the healthy that need a doctor, but it's the sick. So Jesus came from that came for us that have failed and, and and made mistakes. He came to give us new life and give us a second chance. Right. So therefore, by His grace, we should take advantage of that and not use it to take it for granted as well. Those who do not believe receive grace and be saved and make it to the kingdom of heaven. And us that know the truth, let's not hold it unrighteously and take it for granted. And as a result of taking it for granted, we don't enter the kingdom. Because our own disobedience causes us to put our crown down. Okay. Okay. And the Lord said today, he said, the kingdom of heaven is upon us. A lot of us is trying to labor in our own strength. Right. Right. And we established early, early, if we labor in our own strength, we will fail apart from Christ Jesus. Because we need Christ Jesus to overcome, overcome um, this life. Because the only, he's the only one to overcome this life. And through him, we receive the, we receive the power of the spirit. And through the power of the spirit. We are filled with life because he's the Holy Spirit gives life. Okay. Right. Same thing, just like Jesus and his disciples. He told them to wait on the power of the Spirit. Even though they knew, they seen miracles, they seen Jesus do all of these things, raise people for the dead, cast out demons, and do all this stuff, Jesus still told them to wait. Why? Because they need the power of the Spirit to help them walk out the will of God for their life. Okay? He said, and what the Lord is saying is, what we lack, what we lack is there is no, uh, he said, he said, let me, hold up, let me, let, me, let me get this right before I, I respond. He said, he said, and what we can, what we lack is that, that there is no successful work 
done with with our um he said this was okay here we go this is what the lord is saying to us as well he said in in this same thing what we lack is there is what we lack is what we lack the understanding is that there is no successful work done within us within with done within us within ourselves without christ for he is the only way and he's the only one can save us and through that saving heal us internally and externally because a lot of time we'll try to do like the man that was bound in the tomb tomb man that was bound in the tomb they tried to help him physically but he really had a spiritual problem right and the only way his spiritual problem can be dealt with is when he met jesus right so just like today just like they, the only play, only re, only way to be healed is internally is through the blood of Christ Jesus. It's through Christ Jesus because He's the only one can deliver us from our spiritual death and our spiritual situation, right? Right. And through that spiritual healing, we can see differently outwardly, and our outward circumstance will begin to change because of our faith and our perspective in Him has changed because of revelation of who He is and the power that He has through His Spirit that He give us. Okay. And um. The Lord also said, through that process, we can truly be transformed by faith in Christ Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. And by obeying, and, and, and by obeying what he, and, and by obeying what he said causes us to endure, worship in truth and in spirit. Worship in truth and in spirit helps us to remain and walk in the light of Christ Jesus by being obedient children that testifies that testifies we are living in in the word of God, which is our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Let me repeat that. By obeying what he says causes us to endure and worship in truth and in spirit and help us to remain and walk in the light of Christ Jesus by being obedient children. Right. Because a lot of time we try to be good adults instead of obedient children. And in the scripture, he refers to us as children. That's why we mess up. We make mistakes. We do these things because we are children. And we need guidance. We need a father. And he is that father in heaven, right? The father in heaven, right? Reveal himself through man, through, the, through his son, Christ Jesus. And through Christ Jesus, by obeying his spirit, our righteousness, our countenance is changed within us. And by that is changing the way we live now through new life in Christ Jesus. is the evidence that we are children of the father in heaven. Okay? So I repeat. So the Lord repeats through his word. By obeying what he says, causing us to endure and worship in truth and in spirit and help us to remain and walk in the light of Christ Jesus by be, by being obedient children. I mean, I got to say that clearly. By obeying what he says causes us to endure and worship in truth and in spirit helps us to remain and walk in the light of Christ Jesus by being, by being obedient children that testify we are living in the word of God, which is our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. And through this revelation, true works of the Father in heaven is done, which is faith in the one he sent who is christ jesus church um i pray that this word was a blessing to you i pray that this word was a blessing to you and i pray that we take it seriously and we use it because the lord is right outside the door man all events right now all events right now everything is converging at one time for the return of our savior and, and I've heard the Lord speak. It ain't got nothing to do with me. But I heard him speak and said time is no longer. And that's and you can see as time being speed up. It's like it was just January. And now it's December. Like, like you can see how fast everything is moving. You can see the events that is in the Bible. Events that, that was prophesied 2,000 years ago. Things that are going on right now that we are not uh, awake to. It's going on. And the return of our Savior is near. And he said blessed is the man. That watches and keep his garment. So in our return, I will see his shame and his nakedness. What garment is that? The blood of Christ Jesus, right? His righteousness, his righteousness. And as we walk and obey his spirit, we take on and in, in, in is transformed into the righteousness of Christ, into the righteousness of Christ Jesus. And our mind, our mind is renewed daily by our relationship with him and cause us to be transformed into his image. And when he return, he won't see our shame and our nakedness, but he will, he will see himself in us. And the father will be pleased. And by that, we are able to enter into the kingdom of heaven because his son has judged and said they are right father right so we have to be serious and urgent in the lord 
right? Because think about it. If somebody said, hey, if you're expecting company at your house and they said, hey, uh, we're like an hour away. And if you already cleaning up, they say they're an hour away, you'd be like, okay, you'll be you'll be a little relaxed. You'll be look, you'll be cleaning. But if they say they right outside, if they say they right outside and they finna get ready to walk in your front door, or they right at the front door, and it's something that you need to touch on, you need to touch up before they get in, you scrambling. You running around like a chicken with your head cut off. You running around scrambling, scrambling, trying to get it, trying to touch up before they come in. Right? So what happened? What happened in that scenario? Now, both of them were coming. Both of them was coming. One of them was an hour away and one of them was right outside the door. Right? What was the difference in this process? Well, one required more urgency because one was further off and one was closer. Right? Right? And Jesus said, when you see all of the events happening, know that I am even at the door. Right now, our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus is at the door. We need to have urgency in cleaning our heart. We need to have urgency in him transforming us into his image and, and, and perfecting our love so we will be transformed. Because trials are coming. Persecution is coming. Right? And we want to endure. No matter what we have to suffer, we want to endure. And the only thing to endure by having that love. Right? The only way we want to endure is by having that love of Christ Jesus, man. Because that love, that love perfect us into his image, man. Think about all the people that were before us that suffered for the Lord. Stephen was martyred. Different people that suffered for the Lord. Right? Right? Are we better than they? No. Are we better than, better than they? No. There's no favor of persons with God. Right? Just like children of God that, that is being persecuted around the world that is losing their life. Do we think we are exempt? From persecution? Do we think we're exempt for persecution? No, we're, God is not a favor of persons. God is not a favor of person. We are not different from any of the first apostles that, that lived before our time. We are not different from anybody in the church that were before us, right? And what what caused them to endure through trial, tribulation, whether they, they persecuted, whether whether no matter what they went through in life, no matter what type of um persecution, torment, suffering, no matter what type of suffering they went through, their love caused them endure because they took seriously the word of God and obeyed his spirit and was transformed radically that they were strong in heart and they would focus on glory. Right. So, church, let's walk by faith and obedience. Let's love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind and soul and love our brother as thyself. And as Jesus perfect our love, we can enter into the kingdom of heaven by faith and by him. By faith and obedience, because our obedience testifies or of what we will believe. Not we can never earn our way to heaven. We can never earn salvation, right? We can never do that, but we have to obey, right? We have to obey because our disobedience will cause our name to be blotted out from the Lamb Book of Life. Right? Because see, we have to understand that He gave us an invitation. About like if I offered y'all an invitation to my wedding, right? It's y'all choice to come. It's y'all choice to come. Y'all can know where it's at, know the address, know how to get there. I can even give you the vehicle to drive and get there. But it's your choice to drive it. It's your choice to obey what I said, get in the car and ride with me and, and, and ride ride in that vehicle there. Right. Right. The only thing we have received the invitation. Right. The only thing will cause us to not go to the wedding is us simply not going and dressing ourselves for the occasion. Right. Which is putting on the righteousness of Christ Jesus. So let's walk by faith and obedience, church. God is no favor of person, right? The church suffered in those times. The church was suffering in this time, and there's suffering coming for the church, man. But there's no fear in those that are faithful in Christ Jesus. There's no sting of death for us because we live forever in Christ, man. And he's on the way. He's on the way. So, church, let's take seriously. Let's take advantage of this time that we have because time is running out. Let's grow in Christ Jesus. Let's grow in love. Let his love perfect our heart. And be um, a pleasing aroma in the sight of the Father in heaven because we genuinely love his son who he poured out generously for us to be saved and gave us his spirit to nurture us and to usher us into the kingdom of heaven. Church, I love you so much. Most importantly, Christ Jesus, kings of kings, Lord of lords, which is and which was and which is to come is here for us. And he's coming soon. He's at the door. Man, it's going to be a wonderful time that's coming, church. 
man, let's endure to the end and, and, and see each other and cast our crown at his feet because he's worthy, man. He's coming soon. And I'm ready, man. No more pain, no more crying, no more suffering. We get a chance to be in his face, hug on him, love on him, just endure with him forever. And then, not only that, he said, I prepared a place for you my, in my father's house. There's many mansions, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. So his presence, Jesus, is the primary reward. His presence, just being alone, sitting at his feet, staring at him, gazing at him, loving on him, is enough. You know, you know we don't want to leave the throne when we want to worship all day. Not, you know what I'm saying? We want to worship all day and just be with him. You know what I'm saying? And then he'll give us him, which is enough. But he said, you know, and then he also said, you know what? I'm going to go even further because I love you. I ain't got to. I ain't got to do this because he got to need none of us. But he want us. Jesus, a God, an almighty God who is 100% pure will want a sinful man. Will want to transform his life and make him perfect for himself. Man. Jesus said, you know what? I love you. I want to see your face. I want you to sit at my feet forever. He said, you know what? And by your faith and enduring through the suffering, you know what? Not only is you going to get me who is your primary war, but I'm going to prepare a place for you because I know what you like better than yourself. I know you, and I'm going to give this to you. Just come to me. Come to me, and I'm going to give you rest. Man, ain't he awesome? Ain't he good? Won't he do it? And ain't and, and he have done it on that cross. Man, church, the Lord our God love us so much, man. Thanks to the Father. The Lord Jesus and the person of the Holy Spirit, who all in one is one true God, man. Thank them so much. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice. Church, the Lord, our God, love us so much. So, let's walk by faith and obedience. Let's cherish the Lord. Church, I love you. Most important, the Lord, our God, Christ Jesus, who is worthy of praise, blessings, honor, and power. Man, love us so much. Church, let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your faithfulness. For who are you to be mindful of us sinners? Lord God, we love you so much and we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your love. And Lord, we just want to say we love you. We want to walk faithful with you. We want to endure to the end. We want to see your glorious face, Lord. Lord, we want to be overwhelmed by your power every day in our life like Peter was, Lord. And when we get to you forever, we'll be able to chance to be overwhelmed by your presence forever. And this is the, the best part about it, Lord. You said we never have to leave. Lord, thank you for preparing a place for us. Thank you for loving us well, and, and making it, uh, sacrificing yourself for us. So when we get to you, we no longer have to leave, but we can dwell with you in the Father and the Spirit the Holy Spirit and all the heavenly heavenly hosts forever Lord Jesus Lord it's a glorious day we ready to see you Lord we ready to see you Lord and we need you Lord and we love you so much Lord and we greet you with a holy kiss Lord uh, thank you thank you Abba thank you Jesus thank you Holy Spirit we love y'all so much man Lord and we thank you for sitting uh, thank you for sacrificing yourself Lord and um sending angels we just thank you Lord for everything you do and everything you have done to bring man to you Jesus Lord help us Lord forgive us Lord for some time when we are ungrateful forgiveness for, uh, forgive us for times when we are unmerciful to each other Lord forgive us sometime when forgive us Lord when we don't respond in love when you said people will know us by the way we love by the, by, by the way we love Lord help us Lord help our love Lord forgive help us Lord help our hearts Lord forgive us of our rebellion forgive us for the time Lord where we fall short and we grieve your heart Lord help us to be better children Lord so we can please you for your greatest your greatest thing is not just we would do the works Lord but that we will return and see your face by having a genuine love for you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we love you so much and we need you. We need you. We need you so much. Thank you for all that you have done, all that you poured out, all that you have paid for, our past sin and our future sins, Lord. We thank you and we reverence your name in fear and holiness, Lord. For you are worthy of praise. Hallelujah. Bless your name, King. We bow before you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for all that you have done. In Jesus' precious, holy, and matchless name, we pray. Amen. 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 Church, I love you so much, man. May the grace and the peace of our the peace of God the Father and our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus be with you. Obey the Holy Spirit. See you next time, church.